See, here's the thing. I can do this fine. You're the one who can't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's your video about today? Morning routines. Are you going to tell them that we don't make the bed? Yeah. Are you going to tell them that you don't like to talk to me in the morning? <laughs> yeah, I was going to. Mm. Do you think I'm a morning person? I think that you think you're a morning person. <laughs> I don't think I'd think I'm a morning person. Yeah, no, you're not. Are you a morning person? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Huh. You don't think so? I don't know. Well, you're not a night person. No, I'm not a night person. <laughs> you're not, okay, so you're not a morning person. You're not a night person. I always just thought you had to be one or the other. I like to get up in the morning. I yeah, just, you just don't want anyone around. I no. don't want to see people in the morning. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom, and this video is part of our Mega Motivation collaboration. So I have 20 other friends talking about their morning routines as well. So I trust that between all of us collectively, you're gonna get some really great ideas and be able to come up with a routine that you can stick with and that's gonna work for you. So you can find that playlist down below. But uh, today I wanna talk about three things that I've had to change with how I look at my morning routine to be able to set myself up for success every morning, no matter what my mood is or, or what it is that I feel like when I wake up. So number one, I had to reconcile my fantasy morning routine with what was actually practical day in and day out. And so in my fantasy morning routine, I would wake up at five o'clock, I would make the bed, I would sip on some hot lemon water while doing my devotion, and then I would get in some kind of exercise. So I would get those things that should be the most important checked off right away in the morning. So that way, if the rest of the day went haywire, right? At least I already had those things done. And so that was what I was idealizing. The problem was that those two things, um, doing devotions and exercise, <laughs> Uh, they were not enough to get me out of bed in the morning. If that was what I knew I was getting up to, I'm sorry, but I would just rather stay in bed, my nice warm, cozy bed, and sleep a little bit longer, especially when the kids were younger and if they were still sleeping. And so after a couple mornings of trying that and not succeeding, what did I conclude about myself? I stink at morning routines, I'm lazy, I can't get up in the morning, I'm undisciplined, right? And apparently I'm like not very spiritual either because this should be a priority and I'm not making it a priority. But I did realize there was something that motivated me to get out of bed at five o'clock in the morning and that was if I had something that I was working on that I was really excited about. I always felt like I was most creative first thing in the morning and so if I was designing a website, that would spring me out of bed in the morning, but I definitely was not sing <laughs> sipping on lemon water. It was like all out coffee with cream and honey in it. <laughs> and so here's what I had to recognize that this wasn't bad just because I wasn't doing the things that I thought should be most important in like first place in my life. This wasn't bad. So what I've realized, here's how now I currently set myself up for success in the morning. So I try to time my wake up time with when the sun is coming up. I get up, I make a cup of coffee, and I actually stand and I look out our kitchen window and I look at the sunrise. In the past there was a shed there and now it is so much prettier <laughs> without a shed there. But I had read one time that if we're feeling at all anxious, stressed out, that one way to ground ourselves is to literally look at the ground beneath our feet. And I also love in John Eldridge's book, Take Your Life Back, where he talks about the grounding effects of nature. And so I've really found that even like when it's cold out and so I just wanna look out the window, even by just taking a few minutes to look at the ground and the sunrise and it's how consistent the sun is every single day, right? And to take a quick inventory, my needs are met today. We have food, we have shelter, I have clothing, I have people around me that love me. And so I'm like you, like I can get go on with my to-do list in my head and, and get overwhelmed easily. And so by taking a few minutes in the morning and just looking out the window, I mean, the kids are Tom walking into the kitchen, they're just like, what are you doing? You're just like staring out the window, right? but I'm, I'm intentionally grounding myself for the day. And then I either go to the kitchen table or I come in here or I go out to the camper sometimes and I, I plan out my day. I list out my frog projects. I've talked about frog projects. Uh, I mentioned them last week too. I'll link to my video down below that's all about frog projects. It's those things that hang over your head that you keep putting off that you don't wanna do. 
And so I just, I do a brain dump. I list out my priorities for the day. I call out my frog projects. Like what do I need to get done today so that it's not hanging over my head? And if I can do it right then and there, I do it. If I have to like wait till eight o'clock before I can do it, then I will. But I get started like every day now with doing those things that I don't want to hang over my head. And so really stopping to take a look at, okay, how am I idealizing these morning routines? If you are not a morning person, getting up at 5.30 is not practical. Even though you see all the videos about my 5.30 a.m. morning routine and, and people swear by it and how productive they are and how it starts their day off, right? If that is torture for you to get out of bed at 5.30 and most importantly, if there's nothing motivating you, so often we stack these things like, I'm gonna get up at 5.30 and I'm gonna work out. Well, I hate working out and I hate getting up early, so why do we think that we're gonna be able to stick with those, right? We can do it for a day or two, maybe even a week if we have somebody meeting us at the gym, but as soon as we have a late night the night before, our kids kept us up, our spouse kept us up, the dog kept us up, it's gone, it is out the window because it isn't something that we enjoy or that energizes us and it's a lot of work. I really honestly feel like we're setting ourselves up for failure. So taking a step back and saying, how can I set myself up for success in the morning? What do I need in the morning? And another thing was breaking the habit of going on social media first thing in the morning. I think it was a little over a year ago we did Mel Robbins Mindset Reset and she talked a ton about not going on social media right away in the morning and how it really sets us up. I mean, when we're like comparing ourselves and being judgmental and critical of other people first thing in the morning, that derailed my day and often it greatly impacted my mood. So instead of being able to wake up and feel grounded, I felt on edge and I noticed I was crabby with my family and it often left me feeling very unmotivated. And so I had to break that habit of going on social media first thing in the morning. But honestly, it is one of the best things that I have ever done. And now I, I'll go on it later in the day. It's usually maybe like lunchtime if I stop and take a break. But I've noticed just for my own mental well being and feeling like I'm getting the day started right and that the world isn't completely crazy. <laughs> uh, I just have to keep it out and it has really made a huge difference. But it, for me, when I look at, okay, what do I need to get my day started right? It's grounding myself and then knowing, just knowing what the day is gonna bring, what I need to get done and what those frog projects are. And so then I work for a couple hours. And like I said, this used to cause me a lot of guilt because I thought I should be doing my spiritual stuff first or maybe I should be connecting with the kids or maybe I should be doing exercise. Like those are all very important things. But I realized the whole time I was doing those things, like my devotion or walking, I was preoccupied thinking about the work things that I had to do for the day. I mean, Tom's favorite thing that he would wanna do would be for us to sit first thing in the morning, just have coffee together, visit, catch up. And I've even found with that too, I am so distracted because I'm just thinking about like, okay, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to do? And could that be remedied by planning the stuff the night before? Yes, it could, but I was never able to be diligent enough to be in that habit. Like, I don't know, for me, I shut down. After seven o'clock at night, I feel like the critical thinking part of my brain is done. And for some of you, that's when you're coming alive, right? So your evening routine is actually more important than your morning routine. For me, I don't wanna make lunches the night before, I don't wanna lay out my clothes the night before, all those things that like everyone tells you for time management and morning routines, I don't wanna do that. Seven o'clock, I don't wanna do a single thing. I really have tried. I've really tried to plan my day the night before and all those things so that I didn't have to do it the next morning first thing. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. Like I said, I don't, I don't like having to do stuff in the evening. So again, it's figuring out what works best for you. Do you wanna do this stuff at night or do you wanna do it in the morning? And so understanding ourselves and how we're wired. So now I work for a little bit but I do, I do come back later and do those things. I don't make the bed, but I'll engage everyone in the family. I'll brush my teeth, do my devotions. I just end up doing it later in the day. When I was having to bring them to school every day, I had an alarm on my phone at seven o'clock. I stopped, I went to the kitchen, I helped them with breakfast, I helped them pack their lunches and get ready for the day and then brought them to school. But I still had that time before that to collect my thoughts and get set for the day. And so again, my encouragement to you is 
figuring out what do you need to get your day started right and not trying to stack our morning with things that are just completely unrealistic and setting ourselves up for, for failure. I think that's the worst, <laughs> right? Is when we set ourselves up for failure with things that we just know we would never be able to stick with. And lastly, I think not underestimating the power of simplifying, simplifying our kitchen and our bathroom so that everything that we need to access in the morning, it's really easy to get to. And realizing that when there's clutter and stuff around us, it, it can cause us to feel a little bit stressed out. And so that doesn't necessarily get our day <laughs> started off on the right foot. And so I've said this before, but I feel like as we just kept simplifying our house, many of these things work themselves out, like our morning routines and getting everything done in the morning that we needed to, it all just became a lot easier. And so it was easier to get the day started on the right foot. So I would love to know, have there been any things that you've been able to work into your morning routine? Any favorite tips that you have when it comes to morning routines that really help your day get started right? I love it. Like, I know some of you like will do gratitudes in the morning, which I think is such a great practice. For others of us, we need to do that devotion first thing in the morning and that's what grounds us. Um, others, we wanna have the time with our loved ones before they head out the door to work. And so what is it that you figured out that works for you? And do you feel like it's changed in this past year and a half? Because I definitely feel like I've had to make adjustments and have a little more grace with myself <laughs> as far as my morning routine too. So I'd love to, to hear if you've noticed that as well. But but as always, thank you so much for watching. A thumbs up is the best compliment that you can give us. And if you haven't done so, we hope you subscribe so that we can spend more time together. And don't forget our mega motivation playlist all about morning routines can be found down below.